Hey guys, it's me, Bad Grisham, and thanks for clicking on my gaming PC build. The prices of the builds for this month are 500 600 750 and 1000 dollars If you want to see a special video with the fifth price point, give me a suggestion down in the comment section. Now to move on with this build, I'm going to show you a $600 gaming PC build that will let you get into the world of PC gaming. Whether it's a gift or it's just a personal build, this is going to be the best possible starter PC that I can build at this price point, and will let you play at least every game you throw at it at mid to high settings, including the more resource heavy games like Battlefield 4 and Titanfall. Some of the older and less resource heavy games like Skyrim, South Park The Stick of Truth, and DayZ should be able to be kept on high settings with no issues, and any older games than that will be able to be run maxed out. The graphics card in this system should last for quite a while before an upgrade is needed, so with that being said, let's get started with the build. For the processor, I chose the AMD FX 6300. This is a hexacore processor that's clocked at 3.5 GHz, and it's actually pretty easy to overclock. I chose this processor over my usual choice of the cheaper AMD Anathlon, mainly because this is a 6-core processor that's recommended for games like Battlefield 4, and mainly because more games in the future will be moving up to more cores, so this is an excellent processor to get started with. If you want the build to be cheaper and you don't really care for the extra cores, you can also go with the Anthelon X4 760K. This is a quad-core processor and it's 20 bucks cheaper. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go with that route. The FX6300 will run you about $110. For a motherboard, I chose the Gigabyte GA78 LMT. It supports overclocking with a processor, which is kind of important if you ever want to overclock, along with two USB 3 ports, four USB 2 ports, and an HDMI port. And it's overall just a solid motherboard with a bunch of extras, and it's only $60. For the graphics card, I chose the 2GB MSI Radeon R9 270X. After the whole graphics card mining fiasco, the prices of these cards are finally going back down again. Because of that, this is a great card to have on this build. Due to it being an R9, this card now supports Mantle, which will bump up the quality and speed of your Mantle-supported games, such as Battlefield 4. This single graphics card can also run any game you throw at it at usually high settings, and it should last quite a while before an upgrade is actually needed. The 2GB MSI Radeon R9 270X will run you about $160. Memory is a really easy component to go with, so I just went with an 8GB stick of Crucial Ballistic Sport DDR3 RAM. It's rated at 1600MHz, which is plenty for your games, and some multitasking. Unfortunately, the price of RAM is constantly fluctuating, which is never a good thing, but you can now have to spend about 70 bucks for the 8 gigs. Hard drives are really easy to pick, as they constantly stay the same, and once again, I'm just going to go with a 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue. Caviar Blue is a very reliable hard drive, and a terabyte is plenty of space for your games, movies, music, pictures, and it's really just a great fit for everything you need to store. Now, there is a small difference between the Caviar Blue and the Caviar Black, which is around $20 more. Unless you can get a good deal, or you just want a small bump in speed, you should go with the black. But if not, you'll be perfectly fine with the blue. The Caviar Blue comes at around $60. Now up next is the power supply, which I think is the most important part of any build, mainly because you need power to run your system. Always remember to never be cheap with the power supply, because it runs everything, and you really don't want your PC to catch on fire, so make sure you pick a good quality supply over a good sale price. My recommendation is the Corsair Builder 500 watt power supply. 500 watts is plenty for your build, and it can still be used to upgrade your PC. It's 80 plus bronze certified, which means it's actually a high quality power supply, and it can help you lower your power bill. If you do plan on upgrading your graphics card in the future though, it will take more power. So moving up to a 600 watt power supply isn't a bad idea if you have an extra $10 to spend. You can get this for around $50. An optical drive on a PC now really isn't needed unless you get a Blu-ray drive, and mostly unless you use CDs, the only thing you'll ever be using it for is to install the OS. I just went with a cheap yet reliable reader and burner which is an ASUS. It's a simple basic drive and it only runs you about $17. You can always upgrade to a Blu-ray drive if you want to put in an extra 40 bucks, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go with that route. Now finally is the case, and once again this is where your own personal opinion or general cheapness comes in. Sometimes computer cases can be up to the hundreds of dollars, so to keep this build moderately cheaper but still have a good number of extras, I went with the Cougar Spike. It's a great quality case, it has a simple style, it holds everything really well with a good airflow. It's also a micro ATX case, which means it has a very small form factor compared to a normal computer tower. It's your build, so you can do whatever you want with the case, but if you just want a cheap, reliable one, you can get this case for $35. That's it guys, this is my guide for a $600 PC, which should last for quite some time before it ever becomes outdated. Now the prices of any components can change often, so I'll be leaving a link in the description to PCPartPicker.com. It's a website that you can use to plan out your PC builds online to see the lowest prices for the components that you need. That's all for this video guys, so if you liked the video and you want to see some more of them, click on the like button. I have three of the builds available for you guys this month. One for a $500, $750, and $1000 gaming PC. You can click on the links in the video here if you want to see one of them. And if you enjoy my videos, you can click here to subscribe to my channel. 
It really does help me out and it shows me when I see some more of my PC builds. I also probably should mention that I started a new series of videos that I put up every week. It's a review series called Unfair Opinions. My latest review about Iron Man 2 is located right here. Click on it if you ever want to watch it. I really hope to see you guys in my next video. Thank <laughs> you.